Hi there, my name is Gareth Spencer. I'm a technical consultant for Man and Machine. So I work across the AEC space covering a number of areas. Um, uh, my, my primary focus is looking at um, pre and post sales support. So going through looking at the solutions that you may require, uh, look at your business needs and actually focusing on the solutions that will help you move forward um, in your business. And to understand how you need to deliver your projects so how we can uh, focus on the, the right solution for you and also in making sure that you've got the right skills, knowledge and training and support onwards uh, as well. So today we're going to be looking at the Autodesk Construction Cloud, but specifically we'll be looking at the Cloud Connect solution. So Autodesk over the last few years have taken um, a lot of time continuously investing in their own products that they currently have or had and also investing in other solutions as well. Bringing together, <coughs> excuse me, a set of tools and, and solutions that will allow their users to utilize all these functions in a cloud-based application um, and integrating them all together. From that, creating a unified platform where you can access all this information through a single sign-on and a seamless um, workflow between the other applications. So in some cases, no need to sign out one, sign into another, go from one application to the other. You can literally go through in one location, utilizing your Autodesk um, account details. So a couple of things I want to just position with you today is one of the key things that Autodesk are really focused on is digitization. And if you can imagine um, all those manual workflows and processes that we undertake on a daily basis, so for example, such as using paper drawings, you know, uh, it's a common way how we've been communicating for many, many years, although we are moving more into the digital sort of market now. So utilising um, uh, things like mobile phones and tablets on site to actually review and see designs um, in real time you know, how we can report that information quickly from sites. So, for example, if there's been a potential issue, we can take snapshots, record it in an application and share it with the rest of the design team, construction team or whoever it may be on the project. It could even be the project stakeholders. So we can provide that information in a digital format, but also having um, the information in one location that we can all access any point uh, when we need that. So allowing us to exchange information uh, whether it be drawings, models, communicate those exchanges in one place in a standard format. So allowing us to view that and not have to buy further applications to view our files. So for example, 3D models. And then optimizing that to take into consideration all those daily tasks that we have to undertake. But also from a business point of view is enhancing the platform um, sorry, enhancing those functions within the platform, looking at things like the activity of a project. So using AI, machine learning to analyze that information and display it um, in, in nice analytics that others can see. But also reporting that back to all those relevant people on the project that may need to see it, whether it be the, you know, the management or stakeholders of the actual project itself. They can see the patterns in the data and identify things like gaps or potential problems. So the Autodesk Construction Cloud Connect application allows uh, bespoke work workflows between Autodesk products such as BIM 360, <coughs> Plan Grid or Construction Cloud. It also has a wide range of third party applications from things like cloud storage um, with Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, Box and so forth but also things like connection to on base premises, servers, databases, ERP systems, and, and many, many more. In fact, there's over 300 connections between uh, many products out there. So with the unified platform, um, it actually works as the ability to connect to things like Autos Build, Docs, Cost, and Takeoff. So as you can see on screen, we can integrate this with other applications whether it's on a document management sort of side where you need to back up files, for example, to SharePoint, share files to be sh to be signed off by other, uh, other people on the project. We can also look at, for example, um, our project management and reporting software where, for example, you may put data inside Excel or 
even Google Sheets, or you may need to report with things like Power BI. We can automate that process with utilizing the tools and functions within the construction cloud. But then also communicating. So we all have emails, we all share emails, so we can collaborate in ways where we can automate the, the workflow here to generate emails, for example, um, whether it be Microsoft 365 Outlook or Google uh, Gmail, or even um, posting information and communicating through uh, Slack channels that are available. We also consider that if we're going to integrate between two products, so let's say you're a company working on a project where you need to transfer information from your Autodesk Docs pro project to the project BIM 360 Docs, which has been set up um, you know, for a while. Now at the moment you'll have to spend the time where you'll select the files from that location, download them and re-upload them to the project. Which as you can imagine this is a manual process, it's going to take a bit of time. Now utilising the Cloud Collect application, this should automate that process. Every time a new file is added or an existing file is updated, allowing those document managers or those potential uh, members uh, time to carry on with other tasks instead of this manual process. So how does this start? Well, basically we set up our connectors. These connectors contain the building blocks that we're going to utilize. Each connector includes a method of uh, auth authentication, triggers, actions to specific apps. So as you can see, there's a few examples on the screen. If we look at the bottom right, we have a BIM 360 project, but we need to connect that to SharePoint. We can simply set up the connectors, allowing us to connect one application to another. Then from that, we set up our triggers and recipes. And those actions, excuse me, within those recipes allow us to do the specifics. As you can see on the right hand side of the screen, we'll be able to get a document from one location, download that file and re-upload it to another location. We can turn our to-do list into a simple, powerful, integrated automation. So as you can mention, I mentioned earlier, we've got project A. Someone has to log on, check the folder where the information is stored. Is there any new or updated documents? Download a copy of those and then re-upload them to project B. This can take time because it has to be repeated and repeated and repeated. We can simply automate this by setting up our simple recipe to automate this process for us and save us time. So let's have a look at automating this. Okay, before I start, I just want to quickly go through a couple of things. So this is built on um, Workato platform, and you'll see here it integrates with lots of different apps. So if I just scroll down, <clears throat> just to give you an example, if I just type in uh, BIM, you'll see here BIM 360s here. Um, if we just go into Google, for example, there's many Google applications, um, micro, oops, Microsoft, we'll see the same, you can see it interacts, um, and things like Oracle um, um, applications, if I spell it correctly, you'll see many different Oracle applications. So there's, like I said, there's many, many things to, to access this with. Now if I click in, um, what you'll see here, I'll just go to the, to the main page, uh, on to projects. So you'll see here uh, along the left hand side we have our assets which are based on our recipes and our connections and then we've deleted. We've also got a list of our projects so we can organize the information that we've created. Sorry, I say information, I mean the recipes that we've created here. Now I've got one under here under my name but it would be probably a good idea to utilize uh, whether it's by project or by task or something like that. Um, at least then people know, you know which one to choose from. Again, we've got down the left hand side of this pop out window, you'll see I can select projects, which I'm currently in. I can go to my dashboard. So this dashboard, what this looks at is all the work carried out within here. So you can see here there's been 10 recipes, <clears throat> 74 run successfully and 35 failed jobs. And there's been a number of tasks that have been undertaken. It's going and highlighting them in the colors. Okay, so um, many of those failed tasks are there. It have just been, you know, from my point of view, is we've been testing different things, making sure things work appropriately. And obviously when they don't, we can fix the actual task. We also can go to the community library, which was mentioned to you uh, previously. For example, you'll see here we've got BIM 360 
uh, plan grid. So if I select on that, what you'll see here with the community library, this allows us, um, if we've created our own recipes, to share them with other people. So it's in the public domain. They can then utilize those and use them on their own projects. Okay, so for example, if I look at this one here, it's looking at retrieving files um, in BIM 360 folder. So you'll see here if we go in, the recipe is currently running. Now if I just stop that recipe, but you'll see they've set a trigger up and a number of actions along the way. You'll also notice that they've put in some lists, some um, if statements. So if something happens, uh, it needs to do X and Y. So for example, you'll see as we go down here, there's a number of actions in total to undertake. Now, I'm going to show you something, but I'm not going to go into so much detail in that. Now, what you can do, you can take a copy of this file. So what it's doing is cloning that. You can then customize that to suit your requirement. Let's go into the product itself. Now, one thing that I need to um, explain to you before we actually get going, because it's really important. If I switch over to my BIM 360 projects or one of them, I'm just going to duplicate just to show you. It's important what we do here. So I'm just going to go into the account admin. What we need to do is make sure that we have our app already connected. So if we don't do this, um, basically the, the, the two won't work. So you'll see in BIM 360 and Autodesk Construction Cloud, we have access to third party um, add-ons um, for our... Now if I click onto my apps, I've already activated these, but you'll see here we've got one for ACC and one for BIM 360. So if I just click on the BIM 360 one, if it's not activated, you will have to go in and activate this uh, directly from here, okay, or in the apps section in the Autodesk Construction Cloud. So basically, it's just allowing the, the, the tools to talk together, um, and you'll see it's giving a bit of a diagram and so forth of this. So I'm going to go back into my project, and I'm going to start off with something very simple. Now, when we set off, I'm going to go into under my name, over here on the top right-hand side, you'll see we've got recipe. We've also got create connect and create folder. So we can obviously put things in folders like mine is here. If I go and create connection, now I'm not going to actually create a connection, but you'll see in here if I type in BIM, you'll see it goes to BIM 360. So what this is going to do, it's going to connect here with my BIM 360 account, okay, my BIM 360 hub. That will then allow me to actually run this action and perform tasks specifically with that hub, okay. So I've already got one created, so I don't need to do that one. So if I switch back to my uh, project area and go create recipe. So what I'm going to do here is to show you a simple recipe of taking information from one BIM 360 project and publishing it to the next one. OK, very, very simple. So I'm going to give the recipe a name and you'll see here it's given me a, a list of previously um, used ones. So I'm going to... Um, so I'll copy BIM 360 to BIM 360. Oops. Okay, so just an example. I'm going to use the trigger and from app. Very, very simple. So first things first here, I'm going to start off and we're going to have to put a trigger event in. If I click over here on the right hand side, you'll see BIM 360. We can also use the search facility in here and see if I do that, it'll just minimize the list down. So I've got, I'm now selected that. What I need to do now is choose the, the trigger activity I'm going to, to select. Now I want to um, create, oh, create a copy of a document in another folder in another project. So I'm going to say, well, I want to select um, the new or updated document in a project folder in BIM 360. Now, if you've got a number of um, BIM 360 hub connections, you'll see a long list here. Now, I've only got, in this instance, two. So I'm going to select mine. So the first thing is, if I drop down my hub, I'm going to select the hub in question and the project. The great thing about this is it will list all the projects and I can use my um, search bar at the top to select the one I want. I need to select the folder location. And you'll see it's coming for both plans and project files area. And the same works for our um, Autodesk Construction Cloud. So I've selected approved. Now, the great thing about this is we can set when this recipe uh, should be picked up from the events that are happening. So on the right hand side here, I'm going to select the calendar. So let's say it started uh, back on the 1st of November. 
and I'm going to set the time saying, for example, 12 a.m. Now, what that does is it'll pick up any new um, values, i.e., new documents or updated documents from that date. Okay, so you know, we obviously back dating sort of things here. Now, what I do um, is once I've done this, I just click save, so it's starting to save this. The recipe is now saved in my library. I'm going to come across the right hand side and select the little plus. Now, what the little plus is doing here is creating an action or a step to do. So I just want to, in this instance, create an action in an app. So again, if I'm going to cross the right hand side, what I'm doing is I'm going to take a document from BIM 360. So if I click on here, again, you'll see we've got a list. So we've got a couple of things we can do. We can create an issue. We can download a document or a drawing. We can export a drawing. We can get contents of a folder, project details, update, and so forth. There's a number of actions we can do. Okay. Now, I'm just going to type at the top download, and you'll see it's given me the three download options I want. I'm going to download a document. Now, this is where it um, becomes really useful. Yes, I can go in here and select the hub and do it all manually. But what I can do, because I've selected this hub at the top already in here, so if I click on back, you'll see it's already defined. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my recipe data here, and I'm going to switch this over to ent enter up ID. Okay, if I click into here, you'll see it's automatically suggesting the hub ID. So if I click in there, basically it's chosen this ID here. The same will apply to other elements here. So I come across to the project. I'm going to do the same. Again, it's given me a selection. I'm going to go into the folder name and it's given me a selection. So basically it's highlighted these top three here. Now, what I need to do now is select the file ID. Okay, now we could do this by just one file. So for example, it could be drawing one and we could just select drawing one and that could be the only one that we want to select. But actually, I want to select all files within that folder. Okay, now I'm just going to pop across to the left hand side. Now, when I first had to look at this, I thought, yes, it's an attribute. It's going to be the file name. No, in this case, it's not. It's going to be the item ID. Okay, so I've selected that. So you'll see this has come from step one. Okay, so if I maximize that up there, here is step one. Okay, so I'm going to close that down again. It's going to hit save, so I know I've got that. So I can always come back to this recipe and it will be at this point of where I am now. So the next step, and again, this is a simple process. I want to now upload this document or documents, depending on how many there are, into another project. So I'm going to, going to, going to go in here. I'm going to select an action. I've gone for the uh, BIM 360 again. And again, I'm just going to type in upload just so it minimizes them down. I'm going to select to upload the document. Now this time, again, it's going to be on the same hub. I'm going to choose a project. So I'm going to type in the project number I need for this. It's highlighted it. Now I'm going to select the folder of which I wish to publish this information. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to type in shared. So I've got the public shared area. Okay. So I'm now going to transfer it. Now, one thing I didn't point out, anywhere that has a little asterisk at the end or a little star, you'll see we have to complete the field. It won't run the actions without that. So one thing we need to make sure that we do is fill in the appropriate fields. So again, if I click in this, you see my recipes opened up. So I need to take the file name. Now, in this instance, the file name's not noted here. So I'm going to go back up and select the attribute here of name. I need the contents. Now, this is not going to be in the um, upload and download part. Sorry, the new and updated. I need to be in the download part. I take the contents. Um, I'm going to select the file extension. Okay, of BIM 360 files. So it's going to take um, those that information across. And then if I minimize that down, we have done it. Okay, so what's happened is we've now created our recipe. It's going to take a file from a folder in project A. It's going to down download that file and re-upload it to project B in another folder. Okay, so just for your information, if I go back, we're going to pop a file in here in a second. We're going to transfer it across to here. Okay, so what is ideal is when you're working on this, can I just say this, is we run a test. What the test will do it will then run the, the event 
and then start the actions. Now, at the moment, it says it can't find any trigger events, which is fine because we haven't loaded any files yet. But it's a good way to actually for, for this to see if there's any potential errors right now. Now, I'm just going to leave this running. You'll see it's going to check it every five minutes. It's now down to full. So I'm going to switch back into my BIM 360 project and I have some drawings that I'm just going to copy across. So I've got two drawings here. I'm just going to drag them in, drop them into this folder. <clears throat> and you'll see, you know, obviously this will take a few moments to uh, populate those files and post them in this area. So what it's actually doing, uh, this could be um, maybe the project CDA and the client's got their own CDA which you want to hand the information over at the end. Or this could be, um, for example, a designer's area which they're utilising and then they want to push that data once they've done that and approved it internally into the project CDE. So you'll see we have ground floor north, ground floor south, and now it's populated. If I switch to the other project, you'll see here there's already two files. So I'm just press F5 just to refresh this. You should see um, still it's got the two files in there. Again, it's, it's the same one, but it's a different uh, file name. Just switch back to my project. Okay. Now, it's not triggered anything because it's still counting down. So I can either stop this or check now. So if I check now, it's going through the process. And can you see at the top, the process has started and it's been successful. So what's happening, I'm just going to exit out of this area here and I'm going to go to my jobs. So you'll see here, it started a process at this time. It's actually gone through the action. So it's going through what I've asked for. And on the right hand side here, you'll see it's telling me it's a successful job. So if I go back into there, what you should see, and you can see it now, this file is already transferred across. My south hasn't yet. So again, if I'm just going to drag and drop a couple more files in here, you'll see um, the action take place again. Now, if we leave this running, so for example, I'm going to uh, go back in here, start recipe. So the recipe is currently running all the time. What it will do, it will check back in all times and look at transferring the information. So bear in mind, you could set this going where you could say, actually, maybe once a week, twice a week, whatever it's going to be. This could be, you know, every hour, every five minutes, like I've got at the moment. It'll actually keep checking to see if any files are in there that are new, for example, and transfer them across. OK, so if you see here um, in the project, and there's some new files opened up, uh, sorry, uploaded in, and now they're being transferred across. If you think that's reducing the time of someone going in, selecting the files that they need, that they know they're new, downloading a copy, and then utilizing them, uh, sorry, then downloading, uploading to another area. Yes, just downloading a copy so they can then transfer them to another project. Just takes that um, time out of it. Now, what we can do, not just um, for example, uploading them to that area. But what we could do, if we really wanted to, we could take this a little bit further. So bear in mind, I could with a client and I might want you to share them to um, Google's OneDrive, or Google's Drive, sorry. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the information is transferred both to Project One and into here. So this could be, for example, the internal reviewing platform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into here, okay? I'm going to add a further action. So I'm just going to go edit recipe. You see it comes back to this area and I'm going to click onto the plus here. So in this case, I want to add an app, action in app, and I'm going to look for my Google Drive. So again, type in here, click on Google Drive. So what I'm looking for here is I want to upload. And you'll see if I come down, I've got download, upload. And I'm just going to type in the upload here because with this, we have two options. So we've got a smaller file that's less than 50 megabytes or a larger file. Just so we don't come into any problems, I'm going to select the larger file in here so I know that any file over 50 megabytes will still be transferred across. So that has been already connected into here. So what I want to look at now is the contents that I want to share with them. OK, so I want to be able to take this file and transfer it across. OK, so I can go in here and start to select the information. So file content. So basically I want the, sorry, wrong one. Go into here, let's maximize this. It's easier to do this. I want to take the contents. Okay. I want to take the file size. So I know what the file size is. And again, can you see I'm doing the uh, relative steps? I'm going to take the file name. So in this instance, 
oh, look at this. It's already identified the file I want. Now you can see here there's two. I can say well, step one or step two. Oh, sorry, step three, actually. Um, I'm, I would assume here that shouldn't really matter because it's still the same name. I'm not changing that name. But if I had, so for example, this was the original name and I renamed it in this step, then I could utilize that. And then simple things in here, I'm selecting my uh, my drive area and the folder that's set up. So I now have that action set. So I'm just going to save. I'm going to come out of this now and you'll see I have that further step. So what I'm going to do, just so it's already ready, and I'm just going to pop this in and you can see where I'm coming from, is I'm going to select a couple more files to upload, drag them in, place them in here. So you can see they are now uploaded into this area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back and I'm going to start my recipe. So what should happen is it should take a copy of those files, place them into that BIM 360 project, but also take a copy of the files into my Google Drive. So I start the recipe. The action will carry on. You can see here five successful jobs, which is great. So you can see it's given the, the time and obviously it's going to go into its own countdown now for the next five minutes. So if I switch into my project, those files are now loaded, which is great. Uh, sorry, I'm going to here. Ah, I'll tell you what I've done wrong there. I can see that what's happened is I've placed them into this wrong location in here. OK, so word of word of warning, I'm just going to delete these just just so you can see. So you can see they're not fresh, um, the actual ones. Yeah, so I'm just going to drag three new drawings into here. So it's going to upload these into this project. And OK, so you can see them uploading. Switching into my recipe, you see I'm just going to click start. So it's currently going. This will go through this, this job and you'll see it should be successful going through. So what should happen is every time someone places some information to that folder, it should automatically start the process. So let's go in here. You'll see the files have gone through and now they've been pushed into this BIM 360 project. Let's go back into uh, my um, Autodesk. Sorry, no, it's not Autodesk. It's into my Google Drive and you'll see one file is already in here and the others will be being pushed at the moment. So if I just click on that, you'll see I can open up the drawing in question. OK, it's transferring information over and you can see here it's given us the specific information as well. OK, so that's just a simple transfer. I mean, that could have been to SharePoint, for example. It could be to Dropbox, Box or, or many other um, applications as well. Now, what we can do. So, for example, here I've got a Google Sheets area where in this instance, if I click on this one, you'll see I have three issues. OK, now what you need to do here is you need to have a title and some specifics. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the title, transfer the information across and also the data here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to populate uh, a set of issues in my BIM 360 project. So again, if I go back here, I'm going to go into this part and I'm going to start creating a recipe. So project issues. So these could be like from the client, for example, they could have said, right, well, what we need is we need to make sure that we can transfer some issues that we're creating because we don't have access to the project CDE. So if I go start building now, what I want to do here, I, yes, I'm using Google Sheets, so I'm going to type in the top Google Sheets. Select it. So the next thing is we need to make sure that, again, we choose the right trigger. So we want to update new row in Sheets. And again, I'm going to select the Google Sheets I need to connect to. And you'll see here we can set in um, our specifics now. So what I want to do is I want to look for this sheet. OK, and it's going to auto ask. Oh, sorry. Well, look at the sheet. We'll look at the spreadsheet first, then the sheet. So we need to specify the sheet one. So there could be a number of tabs in there that we're selecting. Now, one thing with this is we can set um, which column we monitor or all the columns. You'll see here I've said 
uh, I'm going to say I'm going to select all columns. We can see do each individual column if we wanted to, which, you know, benefits to everyone. Then. So we click save. And then the next step is actually taking the project we're going to push them into and setting the right fields appropriately. So again, if I go to actions, I'm going to do action in app BIM 360. So as you can see here, I need to select the right thing in. So I'm going to go issues. I always use the search engine. I find it easier just to minimize down the list um, with the options. So click search. I'm going to select the hub. So you see I've selected it. And again, now we need to pick in the specific hub name. So in this case, this one, project name. So if I create a project I want to select, and I've just noticed a mistake. Yes, I've just noticed a mistake. I've selected ser search issues. I don't want to search issues. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to delete that and then select actions again. BIM 360. And I want to create an issue. So create issue okay does help to make sure you pick the right one create an issue in a project again select the active hub i'm going to pick in here project name so I'll make sure i put the right project in otherwise i'll create it on a project that i want it to now i'm i can go in here i can because it's basically in the hub it's picking the um, issue types that are highlighted now, what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to make this as client comment backs, so I'm going to select this, but you could potentially have the field in your spreadsheet to select from, similar as we had before. So I'm going to do design, and I'm going to come in here and I say client feedback. Okay, so this is giving the feedback from the specific client itself. I'm going to do the title issue of the um or the issues title so what i need to do in this case i need to look at the actual spreadsheet and get the data so i called the title issues so you'll see if you come back in here and select issue okay now i can just do that and it will just create a title with an issue with a title but i'm going to go some optional fields here so what i want to do and add in i want to have a description so it puts the description in for me um, actually i'm going to add the status I'm going to put the due date and um, created at. So, you know, the date it was created at and then do apply. So you'll see in here with description, it's going to take the description field. So basically these four fields I've got here is going to be included. It's automatically selected it for me, which is great. I'm going to have the status as draft because what I'm going to do is create them and then I'm going to go in manually and make them open because I need to assign them to specific people as well. And again, we could have all that information in the spreadsheet, but because this is coming from the client, they don't know who it needs to be assigned to. So in this case, I'm going to do that. So um, due date, I'm going to put it in here and you can see here's the column due date and I'm going to do created at as in the start date. And there we go, We've got all the steps. So if you minimize that down, you'll see basically trigger event and one action. Very, very simple. So just for your information, just to show you this, if I go back into the project, you'll see here under issues, we currently have not listed. I'm now going to go in and run my action. If I go in here, just going to save that, run a test. So the test will go through, it will start the trigger event, and there you go, it's, it's found one you'll see it's been successful. So if I just exit that and you'll see under jobs, it's ran um, the action for me and created the, the issues. Switch back in. I'm just gonna refresh the screen because it might not. And you should see in a second, there you go. There's one being created already, it should be creating the others, but if, if now you can see here, it's draft, client feedback, Google Sheets, Okay, so I can go in, you'll see I'm the owner. I can then fill out the rest of the field if I like. There are the fourth, and then we've got the data sort of set up. So it's quickly automated a process for me without having to go in and set these up. So in, in, in real world, you could do this with your client. You could get them to create any issues, fill out that spreadsheet, and then all you do is automate the process. So every time it's filled out, or you know, once a day, for example, push the data back into your project and then you can do the rest. I hope you found that useful. It's, a, it's such a good application, how it can easily transfer information from one location. 
there's many things you can do. Like I was mentioning earlier, you know, you can make a simple recipe like I have, or you could create a really complex one that you could even specify, for example, the one that's pushing the files across, that it will only take PDFs. And basically it'll look for the .pdf at the end of the file and untransfer that file across. So there's many things you can do. Hopefully you find that useful. Thank you.